it was a good time to talk about gravity fed pellet stoves. It's that time of year, it's late fall, it's starting to get cold and you need to heat your houses. This used to be a wood stove and I converted it to a pellet stove using the technology that already exists from gravity fed pellet stoves. I went ahead and took that technology of uh, non auger operated fed pellet stoves and uh, basically adapted that technology to the stove, the wood stove's door and uh, made a system that operates flawlessly and has heated my house for a couple of years now. So let's go ahead and talk about how these things work. Just like all pellet stoves, we have a hopper up top that can contain pellets. The pellets then feed down into the, into the pellet stove, just like any regular pellet stove. Traditionally, this is done and paste with an auger that's uh, either battery or operated by plugging into a wall. The benefit of gravity fed pellet stoves is you don't need this auger constantly powered, constantly drawing electricity. What actually feeds the pellets into the pellet stove is uh, an obstruction caused by the pellets jamming into a fire basket. So deep into this pellet stove, there's a wire basket that actually contains the fire and the embers and pellets begin to back up into this tube where there's no airflow, so fire can't happen in this tube. So the fire happens down there in the stove. Once the fire burns all the material and pellets free, there's no longer any obstructing keeping these pellets in the tube. Therefore, the, tube, the pellets in the tube, uh, gravity allows those to fall down the tube into the fire basket. Once those end up in the basket, the fire continues to burn and the space behind those pellets is filled by the pellets in the hopper. The air is able to get to the pellets and not burn up this tube because the air comes from a separate, separate area right here. This is called the burner plate and traditionally it's done with a, a angled plate with holes in it or a plate that has several rods uh, continuing the angle of the hopper tube down into the fire box box or basket. This plate can often get clogged with ash over hours and hours of pellets burning and building up and in that firebox it'll start to back up full of ash. So one of the things I've done and several uh, other pellet burners also have this adaptation I've found upon my research is the ability to shake the burner plate. So I can shake my burner plate while it's running and shake any ash off. Most of the ash gets pushed forward into the wood stove, but just for a little bit that ends up coming back on the backstroke, I do put a little tray here to collect the ash. The system works pretty flawlessly. It's basically just using the principles of gravity, which we all know gravity can never fail, so the pellets are always gonna get pulled. The only issue would be if there's some sort of obstruction. So if this wood stove has been running for, you know, say two weeks, and you haven't gone in there and cleaned it much, occasionally, right where the fire area and pellet area meets, which actually ends up being pretty close to the door surface. Occasionally a little uh, ridge of ash will form and that does start to um, inhibit the pellets falling down. Uh, sometimes it'll start a little to burn up in the tube a little bit, but it usually clears itself out. Um, with the large hopper I have, I have a rod that runs down here and can agitate it. I think probably the most traditional gravity-fed pellet stove is going to be your Wiseway uh, gravity-fed pellet stove that was available at uh, Tractor Supply um, about 2018. I did find some of these Wiseways uh, gravity-fed pellet stoves on Craigslist uh, with very little use, so I'm wondering whether maybe they also suffer from the ash buildup situation and um, maybe they lack in performance and people are kind of underwhelmed. I suppose that's probably my prediction with why those aren't still available widely. But uh, this system, though it's flawed for uh, a product like that, is great for someone like you or me who's a DIYer who just really wants the freedom of burning pellets in a wood stove. So that's how well the system works for me. Uh, I absolutely recommend doing this. Uh, I have found that just like any wood stove, you do need to clean the chimney. I got my own tools and I just hop up on my roof and clean my chimney every year. Uh, I did not, however, go into the basement and empty out the trap at the bottom of the chimney for several years. And um, 
I ended up cleaning a lot of ash out of there. So when you do clean your chimney, make sure you go into your basement and clean up that trap at the bottom and get all that uh, creosote out of there too. Thanks for watching everybody. If you haven't seen the video where I built this pellet stove or the update video where I build the hopper in the forced hot air, make sure you check those out in this playlist right here. Check out some of my other cool build videos in this playlist right here. If you like the video, make sure to give me a thumbs up and subscribe for more cool videos. And I'll catch you guys next time. And I'll catch you guys next time. Uh, for anyone else who's still trying to... If anyone's... Can you go lay down? Your clicking is going to be a problem.